Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be looking at Apple stock today and see if it's a good investment opportunity. But first, I wanted to start with a little market overview and what that means for investors. Since the market high that we experienced on February 12th, when the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit $29,551, the market has fallen by over 35%, and a lot of stocks are looking very attractive right now. I wanted to start this video by putting all of this into context, because we can't say a stock is a good buy just by looking at its value. Because at this time, I think most companies are approaching undervalued territory. The way I look at it, we have to take into consideration the opportunity cost. Or in other words, would my money be better invested in this company, or are there better places to put it right now? So with that said, in this video I'll be analyzing Apple stock to see if it's a good buying opportunity right now, or if your money will be better off invested in other stocks. To start off, I think sharing a little bit of my history with Apple stock is warranted. I have owned Apple stock one time, and it was for a three week period in the summer of 2018. This is when I was still pretty green in the market, and like most people when they start off, I did not have a ton of money to invest. So I purchased like two shares of Apple stock around 185, and for the sole reason of owning the stock when they became the first company in the world to hit $1 trillion market cap. Once they hit this threshold, I quickly sold out because I didn't think that any company could actually be worth that much, and the stock would drop quickly back down. And I think this story goes to show us how much I've actually changed my investment strategy over the years, and why buying and holding pays off in the long term. Because if I had held my stake in Apple, within 18 months, I would have made another 70% on my investment, and even today I would still be in the green, regardless of this, this drop. Taking a look at Apple stock today, currently they're trading for $229 a share, which is almost 30% lower than their high at $327. Now you may be thinking because of this, it's a good time to buy for cheap. But because of what I mentioned earlier, we need to consider the opportunity cost of other cheaper investment options at this time. They're still trading at a PE ratio of above 18, which is above their usual PE ratio range over the last five years. Apple is also pretty new to paying dividends to their shareholders. They paid their first dividend in 2012, but it's never been a substantial payout, with their highest yearly dividend yield in 2013 at 2.8%. Over the past four years, their yield has averaged 1.6%. Now in context, this isn't too bad, given that their dividend payout ratio is pretty low at 23%, and this means that if they decided to, they could quadruple their dividend payment and still be able to retain a small part of their earnings to fuel future growth. One of the main things that Apple stock has going for it right now is the opportunity in 5G. It's anticipated that 5G infrastructure will cover 40% of the world by 2024, and in order to do this, global spending on this improved infrastructure will be $2.3 billion by only 2021 and much more to come after that. The reason why people are willing to invest so much is that 5G is expected to be 100 times faster than our current 4G technology, and once this gets built out, it'll really push people to update their devices. Apple devices, alongside all of their competitors right now, has started to stagnate in the last couple years, and because of that, people are starting to use their devices for longer and not upgrading to the newest model every year. However, with the 5G rollout, Customers will definitely want to get on board with this because the new models will actually be markedly better than their 4G predecessors. Also, because these devices will probably play a larger role in people's lives, they will also be willing to pay more for them and this will increase Apple's ASP or average selling prices and I would assume total revenue. Apple has also been able to remain as the dominant personal device company for the last five to 10 years because of the way that they suck consumers in and keep them using their products over time. Most people will refer to this as the Apple ecosystem, but for those not familiar with that term, it reflects the seamless way that Apple products integrate with each other across platforms, which then makes it much harder for a customer to switch brands because they become accustomed to that functionality. 
For example, iMessage can be used on your MacBook, your iPhone, your iPad, your watch, but if you switch your phone, all of that goes away. So that's why people are hesitant to switch from their iPhone to let's say an Android, because they won't be able to text people from their laptop anymore. The Apple ecosystem strength is evidenced by their super fast growing market segment of wearables, which includes the AirPods and Apple Watch. And that now makes up a larger portion of the revenue than Apple's computer business, which is crazy to think because 20 to 25 years ago, that's all that Apple was. They were just a computer company. Another segment of Apple's business that is important to mention is their services segment. This business unit includes a diverse group of offerings, including the Apple Store, Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, Apple Arcade, Apple News Plus, Apple Play, and iCloud. This market is growing between 15 to 20% a year, and many analysts expect that in the next 10 years, the business segment will surpass iPhone sales and become the cornerstone of their business. Now I'm not quite sold on this idea because of what we just talked about, the Apple ecosystem. I think that hardware will have to continue to be the main point of Apple's business because it's a large investment for people and switching can be scary. With digital services like these, I think it'll be a lot less sticky and much easier to switch than with their hardware. For example, I recently just switched back to iPhones and for my music player, I had Spotify. Now because of the integration with the Apple Watch, I decided to switch to Apple Music instead of continuing to pay for Spotify Prime. And I think this goes to show us that it's the hardware, the Apple Watch, the AirPods, the phone, iPad, the Mac, that actually drive the software. And I don't think there's anywhere that the software can really thrive without the hardware integration. So when you take into consideration their dividend history, the 5G opportunity, the product ecosystem, services, and their current valuation, I think Apple is a good company, but there are other better investment opportunities out in the market, and therefore, I will not be initiating a position with Apple in my portfolio at this time. Now I think if Apple stock falls another 20 to 30%, and the market really doesn't do anything in that time period, I would definitely be something that I would buy at that time, because I really do like their products and business. However, their valuation still seems a little high for my liking. A lot of this is because I think Apple's sales will be pretty heavily impacted by this current um, crisis that we're dealing with right now. And despite that, their stock price hasn't fallen even as much as the market has. And because of that, I decided to pass this time on buying the stock. Now I know Apple products are pretty polarizing. You either love them or you hate them. But I think it's pretty hard for people to deny that Apple is a very good company right now. And that's probably the main reason why the stock has not fallen as much as the market. However, with their massive run up in their price the last couple years, coupled with this drop that isn't nearly as much as the market, I think right now the stock is a little bit expensive for me and I would like to funnel my money into other investment opportunities. But let me know what you guys think about the stock and maybe I missed something in the, my analysis and you can point that out to me. I also just wanted to say thank you to you guys. Um, in the last month and a half since I've been releasing videos, I now surpassed the 1000 view mark. I've also started to gain, gain some traction in my subscribers, um, which to each and every one of you, I wanted to say thank you. With that said, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. Uh, I'll be re releasing these videos. Um, I'm shooting for twice a week right now, but at least once a week with some new stock analysis um, and maybe some commentary on uh, things that are going on in the market. I haven't quite made up my mind on what stock I'm gonna do an analysis on next. So if you guys have any uh, suggestions, leave those in the comments and hopefully I can uh, do an analysis on those. I've also been receiving some comments they're just asking my opinion on one or two things. So if you just want a quick response, make sure you just ask my opinion. However, if you want a full video done on it, make sure to ask if I can make a full video on it and not just my quick opinion. And with that said, um, subscribe to the channel guys if you want to 
stick around and see the new videos that I release. Make sure to like the video if you did. And on the screen right now, you should see um, my most recent video and then a vid video suggestion for you. So feel free to click those videos if you're interested in seeing more. And I will see you guys in the next video.